Some people love them and some people hate them, and some people end up getting killed by them. So what is it about clowns? Well, let's take a look at one of the most renowned horror films which involves a clown. It. I hate a clown! Now, being a huge Stephen King fan, and seeing my book collection here might just give that away to people, I've seen it more times than I care to remember. Um, I even remember some years back filming a spoof with some friends, but I won't go there, that's an entirely different story. Pulling it to pieces won't be entirely easy, but I'm sure I can find a few things that are it about shit. Shit about it. So, here we go, and it looks like... Hey, this is the second part of the movie. Fuck, I hate this goddamn double-sided disc fiasco. Unless you've got the eyesight of a hawk, then there's no way you can read what side you put in. <laughs> anyway, the seven loser kids who are growing up, and they're being terrorised by some evil force in their hometown of Derry. Loads of kids get killed, would you believe, by a clown? It wasn't a clown at first. It was a werewolf. Okay, so it's not always a clown. But it was a clown underneath. Okay, it is, and it isn't a clown. God. There's naturally got to be a bunch of evil older kids in the town, so they make life hellish for the fat bastard, and the kid who stutters, and the black kid, and the girl. Oh, hell, just basically all of them, okay? One of the main characters is called Bill, and he's got a younger brother called Georgie, who has a memorable scene with Tim Curry, who plays Pennywise the Dancing Clown. Hi, Georgie! Now, the first time I saw this movie, I had nightmares for such a long time, but in the long run it got me into Stephen King books and movies, so I can't complain too much, really. Don't you want a balloon? Now, seriously, I don't care how old you are, if you saw a fucking clown in the dream while it's pissing down with rain, would you stay there and have a discussion about paper boats and balloons? Oh, yeah. Sure you would. So that's why young Georgie stays. Would you stick your arm into the drain? Oh, yeah. Sure you would. And that's what young Georgie does. And he dies. Yes, folks, clowns are evil and twisted. This film's one of those made-for-TV adaptions, and it's filmed really well, clocking in at about three hours. Now, I've heard recently that they're remaking it into a feature movie, probably running close to two hours. What? No! You wankers, who comes up with these ideas? If you want to do a good job, then make it exactly like the book. So it'll be like 24 hours long and probably banned in every single country it gets released in. Pennywise pops up in a few more forms, which are genuinely creepy, including stalking Eddie in the showers of school. Perverted clowns, what next? The film shows us the seven losers as adults, now 30 years on, and it reverts back to their days as kids and how they ultimately came together. There's Ben, who's a successful movie star and who was the fat kid, Mike the librarian, who was just a kid carrying around his photo album all the time, Bev, who works in a factory and was an abused kid, Eddie, who's a loser and was a loser with asthma as a kid, Stan, who is stiff as a board and was a boy scout as a kid, Bill, who is a famous writer and was a stuttering freak as a kid, and then there's Richie, who is a famous comedian and who made shit jokes as a kid. What a remarkable bunch. This scene always makes me chuckle. The bad kids corner Mike and threaten to put a firework in his pocket. What do you say to a rocket in your pocket? <laughs> Look how slowly it happens. By the time he gets the flame to the fuse, the lighter will be out of flammable gas. We're treated to a really lame rock fight between the two gangs, Pennywise pops up now and then to scare the shit out of you, so the losers decide after a while to take matters into their own hands. They take some shooting practice at a bunch of tin cans and bottles, and then they go in search for the clown. Two of the evil kids are picked off by Pennywise, who is minding his own business floating around the sewers as some flying white light stroke turtle thing, while Henry Bowers, the leader of the gang, gets an instant hair dye before our very eyes. Cool. He turns back into the clown and scares the kids some more. <laughs> Evil clown, there's no need for it. It's no wonder people fucking hate clowns and have phobias. Speaking of which, let's have a short scientific word from Professor Bruce on the matter. It. The film, based on the Stephen King book, 
that inspired millions of clown phobias. I've been doing my own professional research into phobias uh, for quite some time now. How's those experiments going then, Professor Bruce? Well, I'm currently trying to induce phobias through uh, subliminal messaging. The problem is finding test subjects that are willing to do anything like that. Luckily, I've managed to find a, um, a fresh batch of uh, willing victims, test subjects, to, uh, to undergo my research. So, it's all going okay. I always thought he says, let go, be my friend. Yeah, oh well, whatever. Bev steps up as the other guys are just, well, fucking losers, put simply, and she shoots Pennywise in the head with solid silver before he escapes down a hole and then turns into a weird spider creature, but we'll get to that later on. Right, end of part one ends with Stan playing a joke on his wife, pretending he slit his wrists while in the bathtub, and she screams in the most stupid, annoying way in the history of filmmaking. He's not really dead, you stupid bitch. Shut up! Okay, part two starts with all the adult losers meeting back up. Ah, reunions. Pretending to be friends with people you either never knew or fucking hated when you were younger. Mike and Bill play on a bike, and watch here how Bill accidentally drops the cards. Classic stuff. Oh, fuck! Henry Bowers still has his white hair and he's locked up in some mental asylum and he's paid a visit by Pennywise the Clown who appears on the moon and then appears as one of Henry's friends who was killed in the sewers. I bet you'll never look at the moon in the same way again after that. Pennywise pops up a few more times in various situations to scare the hell out of the losers but they all manage to escape unharmed. He's not really very good at his job with Pennywise, to be honest. He's trying to kill these people, but all he ever does is make them shit their pants a bit and then leaves them alone. What? <laughs> What's the matter? One balloon, not enough! Try a bitch! All the losers eventually meet up for a meal, talk crap and tell bad jokes before their fortune cookies scare the shit out of them. Love how Eddie screams out here before he even opens up his cookie to find out what cheap gag awaits him. So they run away from the restaurant without paying the bills, you fucking cheapskates. I like it. They end up going to the library where Mike just happens to have a fridge full of beer, but wait, he's got balloons too. All colours. And Stan's head. Stan, sorry I'm late. Well, let's see who's here. See, I told you he wasn't dead, he's talking. After listening to his bullshit, they slam the fridge door in his face and go to the hotel, where we see Pennywise take the form of Bev and have a bit of a moment with Ben who's played by the late John Ritter, who I've always been a big fan of. Kiss me, fat boy! Henry Bowers pops up and stabs Mike before Eddie and Ben storm into the room and Bowers then seems to stab himself. What a dickhead. Mike ends up going to the hospital due to his wounds. Everyone goes to the sewers again looking for Pennywise, who has now taken the form of a giant spider. I swear, if you don't like clowns or even spiders, then don't watch this movie. He kind of just stands around, waving his rubber arms about and shining these dead lights at the guy's faces. And then Bev shoots some silver earrings at the spider's belly. Eddie decides to take a nap, and the others just go and literally kick the shit out of the spider before they all go outside to catch some sun. Love how Bill's holding his wife, Ben's holding Bev, and there's poor Richie carrying the dead corpse of Eddie. <laughs> so, that's the end of the movie. Well, not quite. Bill and his wife go for a suicidal ride down a steep hill on his bike that he had as a kid, and then it ends. So, overall, it's a really decent film to watch, and it deserves my score of 8.5 out of 10. Silly boy, you still think you can see me? <laughs> You'll never see me.